guys, in today's video, I want to talk about something that I think is really important, and that is problems that can arise when you start following people online and different communities online, whether it be the skincare community, the beauty community, or you know, insert your favorite diet community, there are a ton out there, uh, the clean your house <laughs> communities. Anyways, uh, this video is inspired by an article that I read recently that talks about how social media exploits different cognitive biases that we have. Um, and I'm gonna take points from this article and share them with you guys. And I'm also gonna weave in examples that I thought about as they relate to skincare online. Social media can really lead us to some bad inferences if we're not careful. It is designed to show you things that you wanna see. And the way all social media platforms work is they use an algorithm that is designed to show you more of what you actually engage with. So the way these algorithms work is they basically say, did the user engage with this post? And if the answer is yes, the responses show more of this type of post. If the answer is no, then the responses show different posts. These algorithms are designed to maximize your engagement with a particular service. They're not designed to deliver truth. They're not designed to make you feel good. And they're not necessarily designed to provide you with the information that you're actually looking for. A lot of times you'll see the comment reiterated, whether verbally in a piece or in the comment section, do your research, do your research, do your research. Don't believe me, do your research. Be very suspicious of that uh, because basically what that individual is telling you or communicating to you is engage with more content such as what you're looking at and the algorithm will continue to show you more of this type of information so that you'll believe it. Social media algorithms exploit a variety of cognitive biases that we all have. The first one is the illusory truth effect. This bias is basically the tendency to believe things that you have just heard over and over again. In this article, they use the example that most people believe just blindly that we swallow, um, what is it, eight spiders a year? There's no truth to that. Um, people always say that, oh, you know, you swallow eight spiders per year in your sleep. It's just been repeated over and over again and people believe that it's true, but it's actually not. The more a statement is repeated, the more likely we are to believe it. So this particular bias is definitely exploited in social media a fair amount, not only within the type of content that you see and are shown, but also with the advertisements that are weaved throughout content. This particular bias, it may have been adaptive at one point in our lifetime, like you know, being part of a tribe and people in the tribe you know, repeated to avoid something that was dangerous. In social media, this is very problematic because we are not presented with information in a rate that is consistent with its factual nature. What ends up happening is that social media algorithms present you with facts simply because you have engaged in this information repeatedly. The downstream effect of this is that essentially social media creates echo chambers, basically groups of people online, different forums that all think exactly the same way. And um, they think that way, not because it's the truth, but it's because it's been echoed over and over again. It's been repeated, so it must be true. The social media algorithm quickly uh, starts showing you things that feel familiar, but it's not necessarily showing you things that are factual in nature. And in skincare, where we see the exploitation of the illusory truth effect cognitive bias has to do with the clean beauty movement. Uh, people reiterating that parabens are bad, paraben free uh, is one example where they fear monger certain ingredients. But the truth is, in the case of parabens, for example, this is a preservative class that is very safe uh, has been in use for a long time with no evidence of harm to human health. And in fact, of all the preservatives and skincare products, it's one of the least likely to cause skin problems, namely contact dermatitis. It's actually the safest preservative for people with a sensitive skin condition, eczema. Because social media creates these echo chambers, one challenge for creators online is that basically you end up with dichotomous thinking. It becomes very challenging to present nuanced information, say, yes, uh, these are the risks of this, because people will come at you and say, this is bad, or oh, you're fear-mongering. Or, you know, they'll, they'll try and pigeonhole you into one versus the other. Uh, it's dichotomous thinking, and it's actually very dangerous. 
Uh, we need to be able to be presented with information that challenges our beliefs. For example, I frequently point out the risks of fragrance and skincare products and people will you know, accuse me of fear mongering against fragrance. But I'm not fear mongering, I'm really just pointing out established risks of the ingredient and pointing out that you know you might want to reconsider it because it doesn't really have any benefit to to the skin per se. Other people, you know, will challenge me on that, and I'm okay with that. But I think with social media, what ends up happening is that a creator will have a given you know stance on something or an idea about something or a type of information that they're trying to present and convey, and they end up getting getting pigeonholed into a certain box and basically just creating an echo chamber. Same thing with the jar packaging. That is, you know, sort of dissipated. But when I first came onto YouTube, I could not convince people that jar packaging was okay. The second type of cognitive bias in social media is something called the framing effect. You've probably heard of this. It's like, are you a glass half empty, glass half full type of person? When we think about discussing uh, risks and informed consent of different procedures. For example, a surgeon can tell you you have a 95% chance of surviving this procedure, or a surgeon can tell you you have a 5% chance of dying from this procedure. Depending on which they choose, it actually can definitely influence what, whether or not you choose to have a surgery. Um, and if you are if you are a glass half empty type of person and you hear that you have a 5% risk of dying, you're not gonna choose the surgery. This glass half empty, half full uh, framing effect starts to distill down into a lot of the type of content that you might interact with on social media. For example, a lot of people view um, social media influencers as problematic. They um, believe that all social media influencers are lying, are uh, manipulative, uh, scamming, and for this reason, people who believe that are more likely to engage in content that is, you know, kind of like the drama content or the, you know, reactions or exposing so-and-so or exposing so-and-so because some people inherently believe that you know all influencers for example are bad people so they're going to engage with that on the other hand some people believe that their favorite influencer can do no wrong and they are unwilling to accept the fact that they may have screwed up um, so that's another piece of it and then you have people who are actually some, somewhere along, you know, on the lawn, on the fence. They enjoy someone's content, but this is where the algorithm can get you. Um, we might, because we enjoy someone's content, we might be shown a video that uh, suggests that there's something wrong with that person. And nobody wants to be misled. And so they're going to engage in that content because they're going to want to see, is there something that I'm missing about this person uh, that this other person is going to expose to me and save me from? And once you go down that rabbit hole, well, then you're gonna be shown another video like that and another video like that and another video like that. And pretty soon you might end up thinking that this person who you once thought was so great is an awful person. But what led you to that path may not necessarily be rooted in truth. It's merely just the algorithm. I mean, honestly, people who create these videos about other people, where are they get, how can they possibly know? No one knows the facts. And unfortunately, with social media, you're not being presented the facts, you're just being presented, you know, content. It doesn't necessarily mean that it is rooted in truth. So you should be aware of that when you form an opinion on a given individual. Um, remember, people are human at the end of the day, and we all make mistakes, we all screw up, and there are bad apples in every community. In medicine, you may have had a bad experience with a physician. A lot of people do, a lot of people do. A lot of people have really bad experiences with doctors and hate them. After you have a bad experience with a doctor, you may go online and seek out content that validates your negative emotions around that. That can lead you down a path that shapes how you view physicians as, you know, you, you may end up viewing them as evil, manipulative, you know, puppets of the pharmaceutical industry and leads you to heavily mistrust uh, medicine. And I think in the current and most recent climate of what's going on in the world, we've definitely seen this happen.
people having strong mistrust for the medical community. And social media definitely has a role. It's known as the infodemic. <laughs> Um, so you have to be careful with how you go down that path. Of course, there are horrible doctors out there. There are doctors out there who are really bad apples. They make not just mistakes, they you know, commit fraud, uh, do horrible, horrible things. Uh, but that's not all doctors, but doctors are humans and they do make mistakes. So if you encountered a doctor on a bad day or they made a mistake, and then you went down this rabbit hole of social media and the algorithm reinforcing a negative feeling that you had about a physician, then you might end up believing that doctors are bad. If you think about it, you know, when you come to the social media platform, if you wanna then have your experience validated, social media is not going to show you images and videos of all the good things that other doctors are doing. Uh, you know, all the sacrifices that some physicians make, how they, you know, put their patients' needs above and beyond their own, how they, you know, sacrifice and, um, you know, would do, do no harm. He's not going to show you that. You have to understand the limitations of what social media is showing you. It's only going to show you what you engage with. Depending on how you feel, you're going to engage in a certain path that could lead you to really believe something that is absolutely false about someone or a given you know, group of people, including doctors, uh, teachers, lawyers, you know, plumbers. I've never seen a reaction video against plumbers, but I do know, I've, I've heard, see, I've heard they charge a lot of money, but I've never had to hire a plumber. So I've just been told that by these algorithms probably. Um, comment below, are plumbers really as expensive as, as I hear they are? But that's what I've heard, so that's how it's been framed. But truthfully, not having a working toilet, that can actually be you know, pretty costly too. So it's that framing effect. The third cognitive bias is something called the salience effect. And basically this is showing you things that resonate with you because of an emotional tone. People are more likely to believe things when they are emotionally resonant. Sometimes YouTubers get accused of being melodramatic. And I think part of this stems from the fact that drama and emotion generate views and clicks and that your content is going to be shown to more people. This article pointed this out and I had kind of forgotten about this. Do you guys remember around the summer of 2000, 2001, the news was showing a lot of cases of shark attacks and this led people to not want to go to the beach. However, truthfully, the number of shark attacks and shark fatalities was actually less that year in comparison to prior years. But people just believed that shark attacks were on the rise. Why? Because they were being shown more shark attacks because they were engaging with, with that. Shark attacks got, got views. It was clickbait. And the salience bias really reinforces the algorithm because when you have a strong emotion to something, you are more likely to engage, not only engage with it just by watching it, but you're more likely to retweet it or share it, send it to a friend, you know, in the hopes of, you know, exposing whatever it is in the video. And therefore that piece of content gets pushed up in the algorithm and shown to more people. In the skincare realm of things, I really see this being problematic when it comes to sunscreen ingredients. There's a lot of fear mongering around sunscreen ingredients causing harm to the coral reefs. And that really resonates with people emotionally because nobody wants to destroy the environment. But one thing that doesn't get mentioned is that we actually don't have great studies showing that sunscreen actually does cause problem to the coral reef because the way that the studies have been conducted so far is by taking coral larvae and exposing them to high concentrations of sunscreen ingredients in a dish. How realistic is that? In, you know, does that, that actually is not likely what's happening in the real world. But because it emotionally resonates with people so much, uh, it picks up speed very quickly. And rather than actually seeking the truth and showing people the nuance of, hey, we don't actually really know, but kind of suggest maybe based on this lab study, we need to do more research. See, people, people don't, 
don't listen to you, we need to do more research, there's not enough answers, people will automatically glom on to you, oh my God, you know, harming coral larvae. And that pushes things in a direction where you then have legislation that bans certain sunscreen ingredients, despite the fact that there is no solid evidence that those ingredients are responsible for the destruction of the coral reefs. And in my videos, I continue to get comments and questions, please recommend more coral reef friendly sunscreens. I can appreciate and understand the fact that people would see the studies on coral larvae in a dish exposed to high levels and say, hey, I'd rather be safe than sorry. I don't want to contribute in any way, even if it's you know not possible. But see, it's hard to convey that level of nuance to somebody who's just leaving a comment like, do you actually believe that there's solid evidence that these ingredients cause harm? Or are you just trying to cover your bases and you know minimize risk as best you're able based on what available information we have it's hard to say you know i don't want to misinform people into thinking that we have true data that sunscreens cause harm to the coral reef but also want to support the fact that some people would prefer to take the path of you know least least risk uh, that is a reasonable thing to do um, that is, it's perfectly reasonable to say, even though, even though this, it's not conclusive, based on what we know, I would rather err on the side of caution. See, I can respect that, but it's hard to convey that to a large audience on social media, that level of nuance. And then you get into these categories of people who are, you know, sunscreens are harming the coral reefs versus those who, you know, maybe, you know, don't think about it. The other thing is the sunscreen chemicals in the bloodstream thing. That really resonates with people because people are fearful of things being taken up into the body and causing cancer, especially if you um, have a loved one who has had cancer, then that's really going to scare you away from wanting to use sunscreens, despite the fact that just because things are taken up in the body does not mean that they are harmful necessarily. I mean, I walk around with a bazillion parts per million of coffee molecules circulating through my bloodstream every day. Um, we've been using sunscreens and people have been you know, using sunscreens, putting them on for decades and decades. There's no harm to human health associated with these things. Yes, they may be absorbed in the skin, we're finding out. And the F because of this, the FDA wants more studies now. And because of that, you are being shown headlines conveying that in a very alarmist manner. People engage with that, it sends people down this path of believing that sunscreens are dangerous and that certain chemicals in sunscreens should be avoided. When in reality, we have zero evidence that these ingredients cause harm to human health. Within the skincare community, I think people do a really good job conveying this type of information accurately. But outside of the skincare community, um, there are other communities who echo these ideas based on really just what they've heard. And I, oddly enough, I recently came across a video, I will not mention the creator's name, um, uh, talking about uh, safe sunscreens. And I looked through the comments of that video <laughs> I saw a comment on there that said, finally, somebody is making a video about sunscreen. And I was like, hello, <laughs> me and all the other creators on this platform who do sunscreen videos. But what that illustrates is that that individual probably just doesn't engage in skincare content. They're not gonna be shown sunscreen videos. They're gonna engage in this guy's type of videos, this guy's type of content. Uh, which is totally different from skincare. Uh, and so that tells you how easily echo chambers can start and misinformation can get easily spread. And it's not because, again, it's not because a creator is malicious necessarily. Sure, there are, there are bad apples out there, but it's not because they set out with the intention of misleading their audience. It's just that we are likely to believe things that are repeated over and over again. Finally, the last type of bias is motivated reasoning. This is a really, really hard one to overcome. Basically, you are motivated to seek out information that affirms what you already believe. And everyone is guilty of this, myself included. I really have to push myself when I am researching content ideas for you guys to make sure that I look to see if there are studies that refute what I, you know, 
believed to be true. I'm not just looking up studies that show adverse effects of things because I want, you know, I have to make sure that I am getting balanced information. I get my information from PubMed. Um, maybe, you know, I'm, you know, I, I like to think that that is the best way to get information. I don't typically go to social media to get my information. I don't go to YouTube videos to research ingredients. I go to PubMed, uh, the medical literature, Journal of American Academy of Dermatology and other dermatology journals to try and get the best quality information that I can to present to you guys. So people are more likely to engage in, in content that projects statements that they believe to be true. I felt this very strongly several times as a creator uh, on certain videos that I have made that have attracted a lot of attention from a group of people who believe a certain thing about what I'm talking about and they see me saying the opposite and they react very negatively to the video. They were not, they were not happy that I was not uh, saying the, the truth that they wanted to hear, the truth. Um, so that is one situation where your title and your thumbnail may attract a certain group of people who wants to hear, again, their belief system reiterated. And that's why comment sections can easily become very inflammatory and it illustrates that it, on social media and online, it is not a place for nuanced thinking. There's a lot of di dichotomous thinking. Yes, no, this, that, this is good, this is bad. So you can really start to feel how the algorithm pumps up a certain type of statement and volumizes it. You can feel that in these situations, I can, in these situations where a given thumbnail and title of a video that I put out, people are clicking on it, expecting to have their beliefs reinforced. And when they are challenged, the comment section quickly becomes very negative. And when I say negative, I don't mean negative criticism or critiques. I mean like name calling and saying bad things about you. You know, we really want, we may really want to believe that something is safe, effective, affordable. So when somebody challenges on, um, you know, that doesn't sit well. And as a creator, I like it, you know, you guys, I, I honestly do not care when people say mean things about me or, you know, online, it, it, I mean, it doesn't bother me whatsoever. It's like water off a duck's back. But what bothers me is how, how these algorithms really put people kind of in echo chambers and it doesn't lead to meaningful discussions often or again, pursuit of knowledge or truth. Um, it, it, you know, it's, it's a strange, strange situation. Remember, you are shown posts that you engage with the most, and that doesn't necessarily mean that what you are engaging with is the truth. It's not intended to, uh, it's, it's intended to reinforce your beliefs, not to share with you the truth. And I think that's something that's important to recognize. It's not to say that you can't go on social media or that you should, you know, get rid of all of your social media apps, because there's really, there are a lot of benefits. See, I've just outlined some negative things about social media, but there are also a lot of benefits to social media. So to balance this conversation out, social media is not bad. You should not, you know, delete all of your social media apps necessarily. I don't think that, I think it's a good thing. There are many positives to social media which aren't talked, out, talked about enough. Social media creates a sense of community and that is actually really important for people, for example, who maybe have uh, had a certain di medical diagnosis, social media can, there's actual data. Social media is very a, a very beneficial tool in their overall wellness, having that sense of community. Uh, you know, people who go through certain things in life, having other people online who share their experience with that, super valuable, very, 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 very helpful. Uh, but you have to be aware of the limitations of social media and you have to understand what it's designed to do and how it's showing you things and why it's showing you things because you engage with them. And it's not meant to challenge your beliefs. And if you don't challenge your beliefs, you're never gonna grow. If you believe that people are inherently bad, social media will definitely confirm that to you. So when it comes to how you interact on social media with, with people, Understand that everybody is human. We're all flawed. We're all susceptible to mistakes, and uh, you know I don't believe that 
influencers on this platform are inherently bad. Just like I don't believe doctors are inherently bad, although I can you know, think of many bad doctors, uh, many bad doctors who do horrible, horrible things. But that's not the medical community at large. That's not who these people are who go into medicine. Um, but you could easily, I could easily build an entire channel that could make you think that. Um, I could easily do that. Um, I could easily do that. And I would attract an audience of people who had had bad experiences with the medical community and w with physicians. And I could really, I could really leverage those individual cases that I'm aware of, of bad, bad apples in my field. And I could create an entire, an entire platform that created an echo chamber of anti-medicine. And that's really scary. Nobody should have that amount of power. No influencer should have that amount of power. But these algorithms, they really do, they really are powerful. And I'm not sharing this with you guys to criticize social media. Obviously, I spent a lot of time in it, uh, you know, creating content. But I want you guys to be mindful of how the information is presented to you and why it's presented to you because you engage with it. When it comes to the people that you follow on social media, understand that they are people. They are susceptible to making mistakes and you know they don't have all the answers. They're going to change their mind uh, as they learn new things. They're going to grow, they're going to change, they're going to develop, and they're going to you know make mistakes. And I think where I see another set of problems is in how we treat each other online is again, very dichotomous in a, in a very extreme way, where on one hand, many people will hero worship a given individual online and they can do no wrong. But on the other end of the spectrum, there are people who spend an inordinate amount of time online seeking out negative things about a given individual and you know festering over, well, he said, she said, da, 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 and that's not healthy either. You should have you know skepticism, of course, you should, you know, expect that people are going to, you know, possibly mislead you. They're human. You can expect that there are bad apples out there. Always, in every profession, there's going to be a bad apple. I mean, you probably clicked on this video because you thought I was going to expose the skincare community as something bad or problematic, right? Um, but and maybe you've never watched a single one of my videos before and the only reason that this was shown to you is because the type of content that you typically engage with is in you know exposing negative things about people and so hopefully this illustrated to you that there is a reason why you are shown certain things and it's not intended to challenge your beliefs and so if you truly believe that somebody is bad online is it because you know that person in real life and you actually know these things to be true or is it just because that is what has been shown to you over and over again on a platform a lot of creators make content that is picture perfect magazine like whether it be fashion or uh, home stuff a lot of cleaning videos it's like are they cleaning a clean house and their hair is all done perfectly and their makeup is all done perfectly that type of content is great because it motivates people but it can also make you feel negatively about yourself because it's like good god gosh why, why doesn't my house look like that why don't i like do the dishes lo looking like that um so just understand that the only reason that all of these people you follow have this picture perfect life is because you keep engaging in that content and that's what's being shown to you there are other youtubers on here who don't do their videos like that one thing that I believe is very important to protecting yourself from the echo chamber effect is to have discussions with people, with real people in real life. Now that a lot of the distancing things are being lifted or, you know, you can do it over Zoom or whatever, but with a real person that you know or are getting to know face to face or, you know, Zoom to Zoom, uh, because you will find that a lot of the ideas that are being presented to you in such a concentrated manner, when you go out into a real world outside of social media, they quickly are diluted out and people are not thinking that way. And that's why it's important, whatever it is that you are thinking is what it is based on what you're being shown on social media, you gotta go out and confirm that in real life. If you see people's houses in real life, they're not you know, picture perfect. You're just being presented that uh, because it is engaging. <laughs>
Anyways, guys, I hope this video was helpful to you. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.